Welcome back. Our next guest, unknown to most of you, was the behind the scenes photographer for one of our last in-studio, in-person shoots in February 2020, when we did the Animal Rescue Show. And if you haven't seen that show, please go visit our website and just search on Animal Rescue. I think you would really love it. And Olivia Pierce is here with us today, four years later. And her life has obviously changed a lot. She's no longer shooting our animals in studio. She now has a full spread of her photography in Vogue magazine. She's been in Rue, she's been in home decor. I mean, she's, she's just killing it in the photography space. And with our theme today of the art in all things, you can't have that conversation without the art of photography. Olivia, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Lauren. Oh, I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to see you. I'm thrilled to share you. And I'm also really excited to have this conversation because I really believe in the art in all things. And I also believe that we evolve in that space. So you have really dug in and come such a long way with your art of photography. You're also a musician. You, you know, you've done so many things in the arts. But talk to me about where you are now. Where I am now, I describe it often as a river. Like I feel like I'm just kind of being carried through this river. And I'm at a point where all of my interests are kind of starting to converge, which is what I love about photography so much because you can kind of enter any domain. And especially for someone like myself who is, I can tend to be shy. I can tend to be a bit introverted and always observant. And it's the perfect way for me to enter into all of these places that I am curious about and offer what I can in the space while kind of learning in the process. So I get to be involved with fashion designers and interior designers and jewelry designers and be involved in telling amazing stories in the woods and in nature and going on adventures. So um, that's where I'm at now is just enjoying the center point of it all and still continuing to figure out how I can offer myself best in all of those spaces. Well, it's interesting that you bring that up. I think a lot of us share that point of view with you. We're inherently shy and certainly feel better when we enter a space with a function or a role and know we're bringing something of ourselves to that space. So for you behind the camera, and obviously because the end result is something very lasting and yeah. something that the recipient um, will appreciate for many, many years to come. So how do, you, how do you see a space? How do you see a story? How do you decide this shot versus that one? I love being, my favorite place to be is behind the viewfinder. Like I will, even if I'm not taking a photo, I will hold my camera up. And even if I'm just like on a car ride and we'll just look through the world through the viewfinder. And I think that that is my process as well. When I enter a space, I don't really plan shots out. I, I will, depending on the project, we'll mood board. I'll get the kind of energetic experience I'm hoping to capture and prepare myself to direct that. But when it comes to actually finding what feels good, it's all within just what clicks within the square. Um, I describe that a lot as kind of the pocket. And one of my favorite things about photography is the parallax concept. So um, that's where the foreground and the background are moving at different speeds. If you're like driving in the car, the fence is going really quickly by, but the horizon is kind of staying still. It's that effect. So when I'm looking through my viewfinder, I will, I move a lot. I'm like on my knees, I'm kind of crawling and I'm trying to find exactly where lines are overlapping or not overlapping in a way that just feels like my own pocket with it, that like it just clicks within my vision. And it, it's, it's really that simple, but also that abstract. And I think it's really specific to the person doing it and it's not really something I think that could be taught like you can understand the rules of balance and of 
composition and I think my background in painting helped with that but really it's this it's just this feeling of what feels balanced to you um and it's a constant discovery too like I said crawling around moving around and finding the moment that works for me I love that and I I love that you're able to do it in absolutely every environment I mean there are definitely people who have specialized in certain aspects within the field of photography you know they like to shoot uh, animals, they like to shoot still life, they like to shoot houses or, you know, whatever it might be, but you actually, as you said, you're out there in every situation using that curiosity, yeah. see what you can find. So talk to me about some of your more recent shoots. I, I've been following you obviously for many years and, and what's going on with you recently is, is just amazing. It's like, you've you know, I, I, I liken things for all of us that we've been at this, we've been at our practice for life, but all of a sudden we look like an overnight success. Of course, 27, we've been at it for 27 years. Sure, sure. <laughs> Where you are now is, is really a critical juncture. Your, your art is being um, invited and appreciated uh, in very different formats. So Talk about some of the recent shoots. By the way, before we go on, I do want to point out to the audience that this backdrop is real. And I am on the Upper West Side of New York City. It is the Ansonia Building, which is one of the most photographed buildings in New York City. And I just thought that it was amazing that I was looking for, where do I sit to talk to Olivia? And this phenomenal backdrop that looks fake just kind of <laughs> In my little viewfinder, so. A beautiful one, it's really a beautiful one. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about you, you and what your work is bringing now. Okay, so what I've been working on recently. Um, it really is a medley. I'm, I'm really blessed that I'm working with people that I respect so much. And it just continues to get cooler and cooler. <laughs> Like I'm, I work with interior designers who I just, every time I walk into a finished project, even if it's not finished, it's in progress. Like I just learn so much. And like you said earlier, the fact that the photograph lasts, it's something that I offer that sticks around. And that's really why I'm coming into a lot of these projects too. It's portfolio based, it's archival, it's keeping record of this massive project that was just completed or this collection of clothing that was just completed where so much thought and intention and artistry and mastery went into creating this and so I really I see it as a privilege that I get to capture those things um and so yeah so much of the enjoyment right now really is coming from the people that I get to serve and that I get to offer myself to and learn in the process um <laughs> recently shot a wedding which yes. i don't know how how that even came about because it it was a departure but not a departure and it looked like you really um you were able to tell their story in such a uniquely beautiful way share a little bit about that yes thank you for bringing that to my to my mind of course that was such a comfort zone pusher but it was exactly where i think i was meant to be it, it i think that there's there's a thing happening with wedding photography at the moment i think where a lot of people are wanting something more non-traditional and maybe someone who's not trained in exactly wedding photography which was me it was my first wedding i've ever shot and it was a grand one it was three days long it was it was a whole production. It was spectacularly beautiful. Um, and I was coming in really no, trusting myself and knowing that I had the trust of the bride and groom who I've been friends with for years and who have seen my work and seen me grow and seen the range of what I can do. And so I think the trust that I had from them allowed me to feel it for myself. And knowing that I was just going to go in there and find what made me feel excited, find the beauty of what I could discover. Um, and it was really a challenge. It definitely was. I learned so much, 
but they're some of my favorite photos I've ever produced and obviously led to such an incredible moment in my career that I still am pretty dumbfounded by. We all are. Um, but yeah, it really, it was the trust. And, and my, where I began with photography really was, I wasn't doing it for work. I wasn't doing particular projects. I was using it as a tool to get myself out of the house and make myself feel happier and find the things around me that did speak to me in order to feel like I had beauty in my day to day. Cause I was in a point in life where that was kind of hard to find. And so I would shoot my friends. I would go on road trips. I would go camping. I would just, the, the moments in between is what we call it. And that's really where I found the magic of photography. And I think that that does carry through in all of the work that I'm producing. Um, but that style, particularly in a wedding was really, really special. Um, and I knew that that's what the bride really wanted and she knew that I could execute. So we just put our faith in it together and it really worked. And we're sharing these pictures on the screen and they are fabulous. So I, I definitely want to give our viewers an opportunity to know how to find you because everyone at some point looks for an amazing photographer and you made just the most important point. I've done family, I've had family pho uh, photograph shot. I've had headshots over the years. I've had photographers come in to record occasions and events over the years. And the thing that matters most is that trust. Mm -hmm. See at the end, when I wasn't feeling it, there were, I don't care how many hundreds of photos you shot, when I wasn't feeling it, there was nothing there I wanted to keep. And when there was trust in the space, when when we were when I was connected with the photographer, when the photographer got who I was, then there was so much to choose from that it was just hard to to say no to anything. And and I think those are the situations that we all hope for. So how can our viewers find you and find out more? You can find me on my website, oliviapierce.com. Um, I'm also on Instagram. My handle is Olivia Philo, P-H-I-L-O. Those are my two sources at the moment. And that's perfectly fine. We're going to put them both up on the screen so our viewers can find it. What word of advice would you leave someone who's thinking, maybe I could take better photos? What, what should they do? The first thing that comes to mind is finding the friendship that you have with your tool. So in this case, the tool being the camera. And like I said earlier, not even worrying about taking a photo, like practicing finding what the pocket is for you. And that's, it's a muscle. It is absolutely a muscle. I go through periods where I'm not taking photos often and I get a little like nervous. And as soon as I kind of reacquaint myself and have a moment with my friend, my camera, it all kind of comes back and it, it's this relationship that you develop. Um, it's not just you and it's not just the camera. It's you two together. That's so I would say that. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing your amazing art with us. Olivia Pierce, we will see you again. Thank you for having me, Lauren. And we'll be right back. Good day, Orange County. I hope you loved this show as much as I did. It was such an honor and a pleasure to bring you these amazing guests and especially up close and personal. So I hope you'll stay with us and we'll see you next time. Good day, Orange County.